Obsession is often perceived as a negative trait. But can the obsessive tendencies of a person manifest themselves into attributes such as sporting excellence that we see in high performance athletes? Mimi Anderson is one such person. Mimi is a 52 year old grandmother who took up running at the age of 36 because, in her own words, she wanted thinner legs. Since then, she has achieved three ultramarathon world records, competed in some of the toughest and longest races around. Morning. Morning. <laughs> nice day. It is a lovely day. You are ready for a big run or a small run? Small run today. I'm doing a recovery run, which is quite nice. Oh. So just very short. Okay. So uh, do you do a recovery run once a week and then? Uh... Once a week. Yeah. Just it, it just sort of just nice to do something after you've done all the hard sessions. Probably do two longish runs a week so they're usually about three plus hours uh, depending on what I'm training for and then two mid runs which are about 12, 10, 12, 15 miles um, and then speed work so I do hill reps and then sort of a tempo run which is usually about 10 miles and then sort of recovery run and then I try and do three sessions at home which are about 15 minutes which is core and just you know strengthening my my legs and my hips and things so it all takes quite a long time yeah, yeah. i was gonna say it takes <laughs> take a huge part of your week uh... i know yeah but i enjoy it you know I, I just think it's sort of i don't understand how people can just stay in the house and not do anything all day this is the reality of an extreme athlete in the world of elite competition the closer Mimi gets to a race, the harder it gets. So a few weeks beforehand, a peak training, I'll probably do about five hours. It's probably my longest run, five, six hours. I have actually done 10 hours at one stage, which uh, training on your own, I find is quite difficult um, to, do, to do to the 10 hours. And I actually cheated and I only did eight, but I did tell my trainer that. With Mimi running so many miles each week, Strict dietary requirements must surely be necessary to maintain the levels needed to complete such a grueling training regime. I don't know what my breakfast is going to be this morning. I'll have to decide what I'm going to... You know, I don't always have breakfast either, you know. If I'm doing a long run, I don't tend to have breakfast until after I get back. Um, is, that, is that normal because of, uh, for an ultramarathon runner? It's normal for me. Um, there are a lot of people who don't eat breakfast before, um, before they go out on a long run. It's sort of a, a way of... It's called fat adapting, so it's a way of you know getting your body to to use up, um, you know, utilise the fat more. Yeah, so I'm now going to do a nice sort of you know 5k run, um, so very very easy, and then go home. So we're looking forward to it. So I'll see you later. However, Mimi's ability to push her body to its extreme limits has not always been positive. I was cured from my anorexia, supposedly cured, when I um, took up running. But I think possibly, had I not discovered running, I might have gone back to being an anorexic or having, having eat f food issues. I don't know, but I didn't take it up to lose weight. I took it up because I didn't want, I, I didn't like my legs. I wanted to have thin legs. But I didn't do it to lose weight, if you see what I mean. So, um, but I think, you know, now for me, the fact that I will sit down and I'll eat this is a huge achievement. You know, I would never have done that before, years ago. But I always think of it, well, you know, I've gone from being very unhealthy to actually much, much healthier. You know, I'm fitter and healthier now than I was in my 20s, which is ridiculous, really. You know, I'm 52 now. So, I don't know. I, I don't think of myself as, a, a, as an obsessive person. Perhaps I never did. I don't think of it. More often than not, it's the people closest, like Mimi's husband Tim, that have the best insight. Do you think that Mimi is an obsessive person? Without question, yeah. And she won't mind me saying that. I'm sure she might disagree with me later, but no, without question. Um, it's. It's not quite one swapping one thing for another, but it's getting pretty close to that, I think. Um, and the great positive is that, you know, that the, the swap has been tremendous in that uh, 
uh, this, this running is very much more of a positive thing. Um, it's obsessive, for sure. Um, we can't go away for a weekend or for a holiday without a separate bag being packed with trainers and running kit, um, which means that you know, we're quite comfortable in many ways having separate holidays. I go fishing and Mimi does her running when I'm not crewing. To go from housewife to ultra runner, world record holder several times over, no, I mean, it makes me very proud. She's, um, she's a, a, a tough bird. I think sometimes people are frightened to, I don't know, push themselves or go outside their comfort zone. I love to sort of see actually what I can do, you know, what is my body capable of doing? Can it run 100 miles non-stop? Can it run 145 miles? You know, I always wondered, could it run 1,000 miles? Well, I've done that now, over 1,000 miles. So, I don't know, next year I'm going to see if I can run across America. Um, I've just been given the go-ahead by Guinness to go for the world record. Anything is possible if you try hard enough to do it. So, whether that's a 5K or a a bike race or whatever it might be, you don't, anything is possible. And I think sometimes people don't think that things are possible so they don't give them a go. Perhaps that's the way I think of it.